Welcome back to The Junkyard, a series dedicated to rebuilding your favorite fictional mecha in mobile engagement chassis Steel Hearts. It was only a matter of time before the King of Brave showed his face. With a heart that's been rebuilt to fight for justice, it's none other than Gao Geiger. Gao Geiger is a brave robo from the TV series The King of Braves Gao Geiger, and is a fusion between the mechanical lion Galleon, its pilot Gai Shishio, and the Gao machines. Built to fight against an impending alien invasion beyond human power, this mech is perfect for taking on worms and steel hearts. Just remember, worms aren't actually evil, but maybe you can still reach them with your blazing heart. Anyway, our design goal is to make a mech with strength beyond strength. This guy towers over other mechs at 30 meters tall, almost double their height, so we gotta have power to match it. We need to be able to protect our allies no matter what, and do so with a smile. We need enough strength to be able to push ourselves just past breaking point, and then a little further. We also need the power of raw destruction in one hand, and the ultimate shield in the other, and the serenity needed to bounce it to. Oh, and being able to fly is good too. Lastly, a lot of Gal Geiger's strength comes from the support of his allies at 3G, providing logistics, allies in battle, and all the additional tools that he uses. And I assume that you'll remember this when fighting alongside your allies. So we're not going to recreate the whole tool shed of gadget tools. Rely on your own friend's unique abilities, not just your machines. Instead, we're only building Gal Geiger's internal weaponry and also going to keep in mind a support focus to let you protect and inspire your allies. Our rules are simple. 1. We start with all 6 parts. Gal Geiger is built with cutting edge technology, both from Earth and from beyond the stars, so they can afford to have them fully built. 2. All parts from mechanic shop are allowed, no fabled parts, and I'll avoid crossover parts as well. And 3. 150,000 credits upgrade limits. This guy is souped up to handle things, but he's also constantly getting pushed to the limit, so he can't over-engineer it and make the problem even worse. Such a legendary mech has to capture that super robot spirit, so parts from the Geomancer 5 are mandatory. We're also going to include parts from the Cosmonaut 1957, my beloved. Finally, any self-respecting super robot has to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Kaijus, so what better pick than the Fighter 01? This mech is surprisingly simple. So a bunch of straightforward types are what we need. We're starting with the high risk breath amplifier option part. This constantly charges up your shield every allied phase, but can also be actively juiced to give you plus 8 shields on the spot. But you can also spend those shields and convert them directly into power. Just like in the anime, this stratagem is the hell and heaven. Duel 1. Let's rock. This part was made for Gal Geiger. The entire build hinges on it. It's also got a defensive intervention that mimics the Protect Shade and Guy's Burning Heart pretty well with Brave Soul, but doesn't actually negate damage, just relies on you having the shields to tough it out. This is a very dangerous stratagem, and used incorrectly it leaves you wide open, but timed correctly will obliterate any foe. It also has so much dramatic potential baked into it, I love it so much, I'll gush more about it when discussing strategies. Anyway, we've got our defensive option to finish it. Now for our offensive one. The Cosmonaut's rocket arm will be our broken magnet, letting us push around or punch people up to range 6. It's not a complicated part. To finish our fundamentals, we're taking the Cosmic Core. This bumps up our soak and max shields, both things we desperately need to make up for our risky fighting style, and to power up hell and heaven. It also grants us flight up to the maximum height limit of 6, and lets us utilize this flight offensively via the Cosmic Slam and Take Off strategies. This is the essential kit of the King of Braves. Think of this as Episode 1 Gal Geiger, but early series Gal Geiger was constantly tearing himself apart, and this build is pretty similar right now, so let's patch up all the flaws and make this mech even more brave. Our maneuver part will be the Bravery Boots from the Fighter. This gives us plus 5 to our speed. We've got stratagems that skill off speed, so this is awesome and also hammers in a gentle reminder that in a pinch, Gal Geiger can actually fly at Mach 3. It's also got the cool passive of giving us plus 1 dice on all combat rolls in close quarters, 
really encouraging you to deal with problems personally and also lets us supercharge blows via the rising heart strategy. The Dada drill me, letting us pierce the heavens with its might. We've got a few options for the left arm, but I'm picking a brawl arm. Plus two torque, plus one mobility, plus two soak, and plus three armor. This arm is just here to make us tougher, as our protect shade isn't actually negating damage, just stopping it with our shields. So increasing soak helps with this. We also desperately need the torque. The King of Braves has to max out his primary stat. It doesn't have any attacks of its own, not even a basic attack, but that's okay. The Protect Shade protects, not destroys. The Tower Shield is another great option. Our Protect Shade is much better at guarding allies, but can't be activated on ourselves, so we still take effects from attacks we blocked. Tower Stratagem stops this, and also bumps up our max shields. The only real contender though, is the Beast Tamer's Wormhide Shield. Plus one soak, plus four max shields, and the shield toss strategy. Shield toss is kind of cool, and I guess could just be reflavored as rushing around the battlefield doing a tenant combo or whatever. But its intervention is, well, the protect shape. I see you, Sandro. Gal Geiger gets a lot of love here. <laughs> anyway, this protect shade works more like other shields, negating damage with each hit instead of boosting your shields and can also remove effects, not just prevent them. It's more of a gamble, but can actually negate damage, which Brave Soul can't do. This is honestly really good, and it's worth keeping as a spare part, especially since anything that boosts your max shields automatically powers up Hell and Heaven. But I also like the consistency of the Brawl Arm stat boosts. Which one you pick just depends on whether you think you can manage your shields, I guess, and researching your foe for the best part. Finally, we're at a helmet. The Cosmonaut Kinetic Converter. This bumps up our shields by another 4, and whenever we take direct damage from attacks, we gain synergy. Remember how Brave Soul being unable to stop direct damage kinda sucks? Yeah, well now it doesn't matter. Direct damage is a resource. You just get more ferocious, or you can convert that to your shields to hit them back harder than ever. This thing is a legend, but you know what would be even more legendary? Having the stats to match. Almost everything goes into Torque, activating Kinetic Regen to build up even more synergy the more damage you do. Next is 2 points in Durability, activating Grunt Frame and Heavy Duty for plus 9 armor. Finally, the rest goes into reinforcing our mech's armor. We're going to be overheating a lot, as well as taking damage from blows that our Protect Shade can't stop. That's okay, that's what we want, we just need the integrity to actually survive fighting like this. Bravery is sisters with recklessness, so you gotta be prepared. Now that we've got this thing fully kitted out, what functions have been improved by 3G? Well, let's check out our stratagems. The Cosmic Slam is exactly what it sounds like. A slam that's cosmic! You move up to your speed plus 6 and suplex someone into the ground, doing blaze damage. Via its re-entry chance, if you were flying before you got there, you apply burning and add extra dice per how far you travel up to a max of 6 dice. This is a pretty standard attack, but can do a lot of damage if you've got enough room to really leap in there. You also get takeoff from this same part, burning everyone around you as you fly into the air. As an intervention, you can also punch back against anyone that tries to push or pull you, moving to a target within your speed plus 4 and doing blaze damage, adding plus 1 damage for each triple on the dice. The epic spiral power of the drill gives us the rising heart strategy. It's just like Cosmic Slam, except it has a shorter range. Unlike Reentry though, its chance is impact and doesn't care how far you are moving. Instead, if you overheat it during this phase, you add an extra plus one dice per overheat to a max of six. You've got a lot of integrity and want to be constantly boosting your shields, so forget about logic or safety. Do the impossible and kick reason to the curb with your drill knee. Our Rocket Arms gives us the famous Broken Magnum attack via our Rocket Punch. Its range is 6 and each double in dice does plus 1 damage, a reliable big hit that doesn't need you to burn up to do it. In a pinch, you can also use it to grab enemies that are about to attack your allies, pulling the attacker to you so you can take the attack instead. I'm sure you've still got your shields up, right? Right? <laughs> Finally, our ultimate attack, the Hell and Heaven. This has to be one of my favorite stratagems. When you activate it, you immediately drop your shields to zero, 
presumably channeling your electromagnetic field around you and your opponent. You then rush to your opponent for a distance of your speed plus two, dealing one damage per shield lost. If you charge this up effectively, that's 15 flat damage, 19 if you pack the wormhide shield. Your show of courage is so epic that it then gives all your allies three synergy. I love this so much. It puts you in such a dangerous spot because now you've got no more shields, giving your all to take down a dangerous foe. Everything on the line, but it gets even better. Its intervention is Brave Soul. It charges up your shields by 8 points, and if an ally is about to get their shit rocked, you can step in and take the damage instead, negating whatever effect you would have suffered. Hopefully, your shields stop most of that, but it won't help you if it's direct damage. This is even more dramatic, standing in the way of a clearly fatal attack, protecting your friends even if it puts your body and life on the line. Because that's what a Brave does! I love how much flavor so many of the parts and stratagems pack in this game, and I'm having lots of fun going through all of these Galgaiga ones that are baked in, waiting for their time. Anyway, what's the completed Galgaiga like? This thing is almost eldritch in nature. Your torque is 8 and can still max out at 9 with one more upgrade. You're also pretty beefy at 3 durability. Your mobility is 2, which isn't great, but kind of amazing with how high your primary stats are. You can still move real quick in a pinch. The rest of your stats are 1, so you're not exactly subtle and struggle dealing with tech attacks or anything magical. Better Man might be a challenge on your own. Your shield max is a pretty high 15 that you're constantly recharging thanks to your breath amplifier. Your soak is also fabulous at 3, and your armor is 30. I, I just wanted to hit things hard, but this is easily the tankiest mech we've had here. The terrifying part is that unlike the Gundam or Mazinger, you're still pretty fast with 10 speed. I I don't know how this happened, Galgeiger is a menace. Pros and cons. For pros, this thing's stats are busted. This isn't a mech, it's a true super robot. He also hits with the courage of all those that came before and will come after. There are no filler stratagems here. Even the mild rocket punches deal extra damage on doubles. We don't play games! Finally, this is also a great support mech, shifting around enemies and protecting allies to keep your party safe, while building up extra synergy for the whole team. As long as you're standing, your crew is in safe hands. For cons, Galgaigar is plagued with a single element. Even its one and only basic attack does blaze damage, leaving you to rely on hell and heaven if you find someone immune to fire. That'll go as badly for you as it did for Guy because Galgaiga's dangerous fighting style will be draining your very life, using shields for offense as well as defense, and relying on being invincible to stop attacks instead of like, negating it all together like literally every other tank. Finally, you've got some serious heating problems. A lot of your stratagems rely on you overheating and burning synergy, either for extra damage or to buff up your shields. It will wear you down eventually. You know. But is that really a con? It's just a sign that your heart burns too bright, even for this machine. No, you can handle the heat. Under no circumstances can a member of 3G give up, and neither can you. The world still needs saving, so go! Make your two powers become one, and show everyone why you are the King of Braves.